Hi everyone. Happy Tuesday. I hope you guys are having a great week so far. Um, I am just going to give it a minute, see if anyone hops on live. Um, today is day one of the three day challenge, stepping into your authentic well-being. I'm so excited to be with you guys. Um, if you have been around, um, for a while, you know that I am passionate about wellness and all things well-being. So, I am excited to dive into this. And so, this is day one. Like I said, um, today we're busting some myths. There are a lot of myths in the wellness system. And today we're going to talk about some myths surrounding self-care, um, which there are a lot of, but um, I'm going to dive into some of the most common ones that I've seen, and um, I think you'll relate to them. So, um, before we get started, if you don't know who I am, um, I am a mental wellness coach and a mental health therapist. I am passionate about teaching women how to love their bodies and um, just themselves so that um, they can live happy and free. And so that's why I'm here. Um, but I'm also here because I get it. Uh, I was there. I was the girl who was not happy with her body as so many of us are. I got stuck in this inner battle of wanting to look different and um, look different because of how I felt on the inside. It was really this inside battle that I was going through and it was consuming. Everywhere I went, I was looking at other girls and comparing myself to other girls um, that I didn't look like them and I wanted to look like them. Um, and when I wasn't with other girls, I was still unhappy. But through this journey of learning to love my body and um, taking care of my body, I, things have started to change. Things have changed. Um, through the hard work I put in and time, things did change. So as I went on this journey of healing my body image and releasing um, just the negative habits um, and attachments, I started to feel good. I stopped comparing myself to other girls so much. I felt comfortable in the clothes I was wearing, not because I was a certain size, but because I was comfortable in my skin. So when I learned to be happy and comfortable in my skin, things changed. I was happy, I was confident, I wasn't the completely shy girl who hid from others, didn't stand up for herself, never said no. Um, you definitely would not have found me here live on social media a couple years ago, never. So part of my journey was increasing my self-care. Obviously this was just a part of it, but I definitely had to dive in to self-care. And the misconceptions I found that I had, I was shocked. I mean, I had believed in these things for my whole life and these things that I believed about self-care were just not true and a lot of people believe them because it's what we're told by society but I'm gonna bust them with you guys today so first of all why are we busting these myths self-care has become so overcomplicated seriously I want to simplify self-care for you guys. It's not complicated. It's not hard. You just have to invest in yourself. 
don't overthink it. Different things do work for different people. So, you know, you have to really think about what is going to work for you. And we'll talk more about that. But busting these myths will help you find what's going to work for you. So, myth number one is self-care is massages and pedicures. No. Um, let's take a step back. So, self-care has two parts. Self, obviously you. Um, care, dictionary.com defines care as to have thought or regard. So, having thought or regard for yourself. Thinking of yourself. So, keep that in mind as we talk about these myths. That's what self-care is all about thinking about you. Like I said, I wanted to simplify it and that's as simple as it gets, you guys. Having thought for yourself, thinking of yourself. So keep that in mind. Okay, back to the first myth. Um, Self-care is massages and pedicures. No, it can be, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, Massages and pedicures work for some people, for others it doesn't. Some people can't afford massages and pedicures, and that's okay. Um, We can find different options that work for us. It does not have to be massages and pedicures. And we'll talk more about the money part in a minute, but self-care can be as simple as reading a book or washing your face. It doesn't have to be going somewhere outside of the home. It can be inside your home. Myth number two, self-care takes a lot of time. No, it can, again, but it doesn't have to. It can take anywhere from a few seconds to a few hours, depending on what you need. So think about what you need. Do you need maybe a longer time in your self-care activity or can you just spend a couple minutes and be good? Um, you know, washing your face can take two minutes. I wash my face every night and I make sure I get that self-care in. It takes me just a couple minutes. On the other hand, if you want to do something like a bath or read a book, you know, it can take up to an hour. So listening to your body, your mind, your emotions, that's all a part of this. When we listen to our body, we learn what kind of self-care we need and for how long we need it for. When I started my, you know, my journey, um, my wellness journey of taking care of myself, I believed this lie. Um, I thought that I did not have time for self-care. I mean, I was in grad school. I was working full time. I was in a relationship, which I ended up planning a wedding during this time too, um, as I learned these things. So I believed that I just did not have time for self-care. But the truth is the busier you are, the more you need self-care. And I definitely learned that lesson because I burnt out, (laughs) if you can imagine. Um, I needed self-care at that time because I was so busy and I had to start creating boundaries and taking action to take care of myself. And when I learned that self-care does not have to take all the time in the world, things changed for me. And I, I kind of, sometimes you have to just flip it in your mind, you know, like, It doesn't have to take that much time. It's not about how much time it takes. It's about how well you're taking care of yourself and that you are taking action to do so. This, there is no amount of time you have to spend on taking care of yourself. You just have to do what's best for you. So find that time, no matter how long it is. Um, Okay, myth number three is self-care costs money. Yes, it can cost money, 
it doesn't have to cost money. Remember that the things that work for other people might not work for you and that may or may not involve money. We've already talked about massages and pedicures. Those things might work for other people. Those things cost money. Some people might not have the money to go and, you know, use those things. So finding other things is important. And there are so many things you can do to take care of yourself that don't cost money. The things that matter are thinking of yourself and taking action to feel good in your body. Don't compare your self-care to others. This is probably the most important thing. That's just going to further your lack of self-care. Don't compare your self-care to others. You have to find what works for you. Um, myth number four, self-care means neglecting others. Um, you guys have heard me say this before, I'm sure. Um, and I'm going to say it a million more times, but you have to take care of yourself in order to take care of others. You cannot take care of others at your best if you're not taking care of yourself. You can't pour from an empty cup. You can't give your best to others if you haven't given your best to yourself. You guys get my point. Um, and if you're burnt out, how are you going to take care of others? You are not neglecting others when you take care of yourself. You are taking care of others when you take care of yourself. I know this can be especially hard when you have kids um, and you believe your focus should be on them and you should focus on them. And obviously you're gonna take care of them, but in order to take care of them, don't you have to take care of yourself? So you're not neglecting others. You're taking care of others when you're taking care of yourself. Okay, I hope this is all making sense. We're almost to the fifth myth. Um, if this is helpful, drop a comment. Let me know um, what has been the most helpful for this. Like I said, I'm just here to simplify this for you guys. Um, there's nothing complicated about what I'm teaching you. It's just kind of taking a step back and simplifying the self-care. So myth number five is I don't know how to take care of myself. Stop. Yes, you do. You do know how to take care of yourself. The truth about learning how to take care of ourselves is finding what works for us individually. You know you. You know you better than anyone. And so all you have to do is ask yourself what you need. And I want you to think about these three questions. What makes me, what makes my body feel good? What makes my mind feel relaxed? And how do I let out my emotions? The answer to these three questions is how you take care of yourself. The answer is in you. You just have to tune in and listen to your body and you'll find the answer. Think about how you want to feel in your body, how you want your mind to feel and how your emotions are. Like, do you need to de-stress? Do you need to relax? Um, you know, think about what you need. Here are some tips for getting started with self-care. If you're kind of struggling to pick up this habit, um, or if you're kind of stuck, start small. Add one tool at a time. So maybe you're going to start washing your face at night. And that's, you know, that's just a couple minutes of self-care, but it can really help. Um, it can be small like that. Find one tool at a time to add to your habits that will make you feel good. Um, another thing is be consistent. You won't see a difference. You won't see change unless you're consistent with the self-care. 
So the the other thing is do it even when you don't think you need it or when you don't want to. Self-care is preventative. So we're preventing other things like burnout down the road. So do it even when you don't know you need it. Do it especially when you know you need it, but also do it when you don't know that you need it. Um, We will always need self-care and it's important to be consistent with it um, to feel our best. So my challenge for you guys today is to decide what kind of self-care is best for you and schedule out a week, a week's worth of self-care. Whether that's, you know, reading a book for 15 minutes um, every night or washing your face every night. Schedule it out so you're committed to it. Commit to taking care of yourself. I hope this has been helpful. Um, Let me know in the comments what you learned or what was surprising, what what was helpful today. Um, This is day one. So we have two more days of the um, three-day challenge. Three days. Um, (laughs) This is all about stepping into your authentic well-being. And so we're going to look at all different ways to be your best and happiest self and to take care of yourself. So if you guys have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I will see you tomorrow at the same time. Have a great day.